First story. Dad protected me from my abusive mom, then found a new, entitled girlfriend, allowed her and her bullying daughter to abuse me, then refused to attend my graduation, told me to get the fuck out of this house, now came back demanding to attend his wedding, then had a breakdown seeing the wedding photos, which revealed my stepmom's abuse and wanted to reconcile, but I cut ties with him. I 23F graduated university this year, and it's been a struggle from start to finish. I lost my motherhood halfway through my studies due to a medical condition, and graduating this degree was always questionable. My dad was always supportive with studies, but not much else. He only had negative thoughts on the treatment I needed for the medical condition, demanding that I woman up, as it was selfish for me to go through with the treatment that would compromise my ovaries. He did, on the other hand, help me push through the final year. And now we're coming up with deciding on the graduation date. Going back in time a little, my father started seeing my stepmother 55F. She and her daughter 24F both hated me and my older brother 24M. They would bully us for being stupid, going nowhere in life, etc. Obviously all behind my dad's back. The bullying got so much for my brother that he left with nothing and decided to start again on his own. I managed to keep quiet and move away for university, where I've never felt more safe and comfortable. Stepmother would always brag about how her own daughter is a genius with an action plan on how to take on life. She dropped out of university to have a child and lives off stepmother's income as a single mother now. She makes no effort to change or have an action plan. But people started seeing through this. So now suddenly, I'm the number one child. Me and my older brother went through significant abuse with our biological mother. It has left us with so many problems and trust issues and put us both back in education. My older brother graduated his course two years ago and is now a qualified electrician. Knowing the abuse he and I shared and knowing how hard it was for us to push through everything, I asked him if he would like to be one of my invitations to my graduation. Behold the problem. My dad is now refusing to come to my graduation, as I'm now excluding my stepmother, who's apparently been there for me since day one. We had a huge fighting match about how ungrateful I am for all the support she has apparently provided me, and that I'm going to be this selfish and a bee about family, then I can go to my graduation on my own. So I may have turned around and told my dad that I'm no longer going to his wedding if he is going to behave like this. We are currently not on speaking terms, and my stepmother is psychically shoving me out of the way whenever I'm near the family and is also refusing to speak to me. My older brother is asking me to write it out and let him calm down, but right now I'm pretty solid on not wanting to attend the wedding. The wedding is four months before graduation. Ada. Comments. Wild Sand 8727. I'd say definitely NTA. You were treated very poorly by the both of them. And you have no obligation to show them respect when they didn't earn it. It's good that you're paving your own way in life. And I'd focus on yourself and your success. They're only going to cause you more stress and problems. Graduating takes a lot of work. So congratulations. If your own father doesn't want to celebrate that with you, that's his loss. And you have no obligation to watch him get married to a woman that has treated you like garbage. Judgment. NTA. Update. Six weeks later. Hi guys, I have a really upsetting update. Currently looking for emergency accommodation after the stepmother upped her game and started putting on the pressure more. No longer than two nights ago, I was making a sandwich in the kitchen, and my father and stepmother pushed me out of the way so they could put their bike helmets on the chopping board of all places. Anyway, I asked if we had any mayonnaise in, and my stepmother replied, Stepmother, no, check yourself. Me, okay. She then glared at my father, and for whatever reason he completely lost it, and said the following statements. You may need to reread the OP for some context on some. You are such a victim. Your whole life you have been a victim. Just like your mother. All you cause around here is pain. Get the F out. I effing hate you. You are the most unwanted person in this household right now. Why the F are you here? F off. He was stating all these comments while pointing and screaming in my face, my stepmother smirking in the background. I did have some absolutely nasty comments to say in my head, but I kept quiet, and replied, I'm not speaking to you while you have your voice raised. At which point my stepmother then got up in my face and said, Ungrateful B, don't speak to your father like that, to whom I simply replied, Sorry, who are you to think you can tell me what I can and cannot do? To which my father launched himself at me. I'm unsure how far he was planning on going. My stepmother grabbed him and said, Come on, babe, we need a break from this toxic piece of work. After they left, I started uncontrollably crying, and I rang my brother in complete panic, 
begging him for advice on what to do. He drove to me as fast as he could and picked me and my pets up. He asked for me to find a friend to stay with tonight for my own safety. He then explains to me the reason why he left back in 2018. This exact thing with the stepmother starting an argument and looking at my father for backup. My brother explained if I went back tonight, he'd be worried the police may end up involved. This part comes with a trigger warning. As I stated in the OP, my father has helped me through a lot in the past. When my mother was abusing myself and my older brother, he did his best to protect us. He helped me through short-term psychosis when I was 14 and was there for the recovery. Last night I felt like my safety net. The only parent I had left the man I looked up to was no longer there. I unfortunately got so emotionally distraught from everything that's happened since this upcoming wedding. I did go outside with a note and had intentions of no return. I will not go into details, but I will say I'm extremely lucky a police officer spotted something off about me and came to my aid before it was too late. Before this happened, I walked out of the house and to the end of my street. I was scared and in complete tears, to which then I spotted my stepmother and father walking up the street, coming towards the house. My father sees me and looks away in disgust, and my stepmother grabs her grandchild and screams across the street. I love my family, then looks me dead in the eyes and smiles. This was the final hit for me, and why I'm so grateful there was an observant police officer to save my life. So as of right now I do have an appointment to seek help on what happened above and me getting to that point. I'm utterly devastated and heartbroken that I'm having to walk away from the one last thing I felt safe in. It's extremely hard, and I will admit I am the biggest mess I've ever seen myself. While waiting for emergency accommodation, I've confided into my room. I'm scared to make a noise. I'm sneaking around to use the bathroom and kitchen as I do not want another argument to spout out. Yes, obviously, the wedding is a write-off for me. I didn't ever think a wedding would cause this much pain. Thank you all for your kind comments on the previous post. I'm sorry for such an awful update. Here's hoping that things will get better. Comments. Fulderft. Sorry to read all that. It's time to find a job, move out ASAP, and never look back. Sadly, blood is not always thicker than water, and sometimes the best option is to cut ties. Here's hoping that things will get better. Things will get better. You are a college graduate, and that is a huge predictor of having a successful life. What did you go for? OP. This is the really stupid part on my behalf. The only reason I moved back in with my father was because he offered to let me live rent-free while I was saving for a house my rent was ridiculously expensive. I'm still working alongside my studies. It's just finding a place that will accept my pets and me at such short notice. I did originally leave shortly after my brother, as I started noticing the problematic behavior from my stepmother. I was stupid to think it would be different this time. I'm studying illustration and forensic science. There's a job path known as Forensic Illustrator I'm working towards. Thank you for asking. Fulderft. Not stupid, just optimistic, which is a good thing. It sounds like you have a good heart. That's awesome. They are the people who make the sketches for crimes, right? That's going to be a fantastic career. The best work is work where you feel like you are making a difference in life. I'm in healthcare, so I can attest to this. You're about to be one of the people who help others get through the dark times and find some justice. Update. Two months later. Update. The wedding. I didn't go to any of the dress fittings or events leading up to the wedding. I spent most of my time searching for future plans and a way to stabilize my life because this has been an absolute roller coaster I didn't need. We get to one day, 24 hours before the wedding, and my dad, on his own, knocks on my door. I'm really sorry about everything that's happened with the wedding and the pain it may have caused you, but I can't miss having my only daughter at my wedding. My childhood taught me not to hold grudges with people. It taught me to lower your expectations of people to avoid being hurt. Not entirely sure if that's a healthy outlook on life, but it has saved me a few times. I explained to my dad about the previous comments that he was made towards me, the medical comments all the way up to the F-off comments from my first post. He holds out the most unflattering dress I've ever seen and continues. Your stepmother chose this for you. I know she's not considering your body shape or anything with this dress but it's all we have. I can see some of the malicious things she's done towards you and your older brother. To explain to you the dress, I'm a size UK 8, 5, 3 with an hourglass figure. The dress on me made me look like a rectangle. It was restraining on the butt area, and I had to hold up the top half of the dress constantly. The dress was a cappuccino color and dragged across the floor, and I kept tripping up in it just trying to show my dad how it looked. 
My dad was mortified by my stepmother's choice and said, let's give it a touch. By that, I think he meant adding my goth aesthetic to the dress. I was able to lift myself up with chunky Doc Martens and not the three pounds heels she had found for me at a charity shop, which were the wrong size, and she knows I've never worn heels in my life. I explained to my dad that I'm still firm that I'm not going due to the wholly original reason this wedding turned into a hateful mess. He then explained to me that he was hurt, that I'd been making sure I was excluding my stepmother from my graduation. Hold on, what the actual F? I never even thought by asking my brother to come that that brought out that I was being malicious. I explained to my dad the reasoning of wanting my brother there. And it wasn't some backhanded way of telling my stepmother she can't come. You can literally purchase extra tickets, if she has bothered to even look into it. I tell my dad, where the hell did he get this assumption? Yeah, you guys probably guessed it. The bride to be herself. This all happened 24 hours before the wedding. At this point, me and my dad have now hashed out an agreement that I'll go to the wedding, but can leave if I feel uncomfortable at any time. The wedding day. I get a text message from my brother, wishing me good luck with Bzilla, as he will be only attending the wedding and not the events prior. The breakfast. Me, my dad, bride-to-be, stepsister, and her daughter F5, we will call the daughter Lily for less confusion. Bride-to-be had a photographer taking pictures of us eating breakfast. Not sure if that's something I'd agree with. I don't want people to have a photo of me seagull swallowing eggs. The breakfast was mostly silent. Besides, my dad kept nudging me, making sure I was okay. Meanwhile, Lily started having a meltdown, angry that she wasn't the center of attention, and started throwing forks at the bride. I decided to get up and walk outside, as this was just anxiety-inducing. My dad thanked me for staying with us, and we continued with the day. Hair and makeup me, bride's stepsister, and Lily. The hair was an absolute nightmare and embarrassing. Bride was refusing to speak to me whatsoever, to the point she asked me to have my hair done in the separate area of the salon, while stepsister and Lily got to stay with her. I didn't know if there was a code for the dresses or whatnot. I was so confused. When asked by the stylist I asked, I didn't know you're going to have to ask the bride what I'm meant to have done. She goes off and returns with stepsister. Stepsister looks at me and says, just do some curls, we don't care, to be honest. She stays for a few minutes, and the stylist tries to have some small talk with me, asking if I had anything else planned, and I tried to talk about the upcoming UK festival I was planning to go to after the wedding, which was an absolute mud bath, if anyone was wondering before I could finish my sentence. Stepsister laughs and speaks over me. Yeah, she's into all that emo screamy stuff, hehe. <laughs> the stylist. Aw, is she that so sweet? Me, just like what the actual F. I got a phone call when they were drowning me in hairspray, and it was my dad. He had a last-minute panic. My brother and his girlfriend had now dropped out of meeting and greeting the guests and begged me to do it. I've never heard my dad sound so stressed in my life, so I decided to agree. After all, it would save me having to spend more time with these guys. The makeup was done by the stepsister's friend. We drove to stepmother's house. The absolute anxiety when she pulled out mucky-looking palettes from her car and brushes that could start a sandstorm if flicked. I don't really wear a lot of makeup or wouldn't even be able to tell you more than what is an eyeshadow and foundation. Again, stepsister just said fix her, and I was absolutely blasted with the entire shop floor of makeup. I felt so uncomfortable and embarrassed about how much they had sculpted my face. The lashes were so long, I couldn't put my glasses back on. The photographer was there. She is taking pictures of the makeup being done, etc. This is a key moment. The bride pulled out gifts for the three of us. To my beautiful daughter, thank you so much for being in my life. Hugs, kisses, photos. To my beautiful granddaughter, thank you so much for being in my life. Hugs, kisses, photos. Thanks for coming throws a gift at me with disgust. Photos. Yep, that happened. When we got the wedding photos back, the absolute bombshell that caused. I'll get to that in a moment. My dad then drove up to the house and picked me up. Here's where things get fun. The wedding part one. Me, my dad, the wedding party. The weather was wet and storming to add to the drama. Dad was in panic beyond words that my brother had dropped out from greeting the guests. I was given five minutes to get ready. I throw on the dress I literally have holed up and put on the boots. My dad gave me a huge hug and gave me instructions on what to do. Please keep in mind, I'm the most introverted person these people know, so this was a big ask. I arrived at the venue and started greeting people. Everyone was stunned to see me. There was a weird rift of, that's not her, oh my god, it is her, in the room. 
I had the entire party both on the bride's side and groom's side tell me what a glow it was to see me in a dress, and that I looked stunning, I don't normally wear dresses. This was the first for a lot of them. I did the instructions that my dad gave me, which were to pour drinks, make sure everyone's comfortable, etc. My brother then arrives and mingles for around 10-15 minutes before coming to me and stating everyone is talking about how well you look. The bride is not going to be happy. I shrug it off and continue to make sure everyone's happy. My dad then turns up, and the wedding is about to begin. Wedding part 2. Everyone. My dad hugs me and thanks me again and again for how grateful he is. My brother isn't too happy as he thinks I've not stood my ground. The wedding goes off pretty well, and I'm also happy because I was mostly on bartending duty as orders of the bride. This is another key moment. The wedding was talked about for about a week straight after the event, and again, people kept asking about how I managed to make such a show. No idea how I did that in a rectangle dress. But here we are. The photos were then sent to my dad and stepmother. The arguments they caused. I'm unsure if the photographer did this on purpose, but she and her husband caught every time stepmother the bride was horrible to me the breakfast, the gifts, me being in a separate area in the salon, everything. Then there's only one photo of me and my dad. Because, as you all know, I was busy bartending free of charge to their guests. I was asked to leave the room, and a huge, major argument shot out. The next day, a brand new motorcycle was wheeled into the drive as a graduation sorry present. My dad explained how sorry he was for never seeing this and is now coming to my graduation with absolutely no issue if the bride joins him or not. Since then he's been on this sorry train trying to make up for what's happened. Even on my birthday, he isolated both of us and we spent the day doing things I love poor guy had to learn to rock climb with me. As of right now, stepmother bride is avoiding me and avoiding trying to hurt me after the wedding. My brother is upset with men because he feels I took the motorcycle as a bribe for my father's poor behavior. I do accept his point of view, and the way my father treated me was unacceptable. But this wedding was a blessing in disguise. It showed my dad how cruel the woman is to his children. I will do one more update for the graduation that wouldn't be till November though. I can't thank you all enough for your kind comments. They helped me see through this awful situation. Until then, I wish you all the best. Edit. After reading your comments, I just wanted to make a few things clear. I didn't see the bike as a bribe. It was only until my brother said it in that light that it's come forward. I agree with all of you. I need to walk away from this vicious cycle. I'll be taking some time off to prepare myself to have the strength to walk away for good. Again, thank you for bearing with me on this story. It means a lot to have an outside insight that's guiding me out of this problem. I will make an effort to step away from my family for my own good and side with my brother. I understand now I caved in. I now need to mend this. Comments. Dogfish Frostbite. Your brother is right. You need to leave these people behind. OP, I agree. But again, I'm in that mental grasp of holding on to my dad. Update. Three hours later. After reading the comments on the previous update, I decided to go to my brother and show him the threads and posts. We both just want to make some things clear. We are both on talking terms. My brother is happy I went to the wedding because it shone a light on the bride being toxic. And in his opinion, outside people are now looking in, especially after the wedding photos and how I had to handle the jobs. He also states that he didn't expect me to walk away there. And then, as there are 23 now 24 years of hooks in me to keep me staying under my dad's control. It's going to take some setbacks to come out of this as strong as possible. I've agreed with him to seek help to try and grow a backbone to be able to set and keep boundaries and start to peel away from him for good. And I just wanted to apologize to everyone who's been following this post for how clueless I was on the bribe. I keep holding on to a memory of a father who clearly isn't there anymore. And this is the wake-up call I needed to get up and move on. Thank you all for your advice and support throughout this roller coaster. I'm sorry that I let a lot of people down by backing on my words. I'm ready to now make a change. Thank you. Comments. Bombshell underscore Mia. We all make mistakes and have moments of doubt but it's how we learn and grow from those experiences that truly matters. OP. I feel so awful about how I handled the situation. I really want to fix things and finally start living for me, and not in an abusive situation. OK underscore routine 9.99. No matter what the driver for your actions, I suspect you'll be better prepared for your solo launch. Don't look at the motorcycle as a bribe. Look at it as compensation for historical abuse. You owe nothing in return. Take every opportunity to set yourself up for your future solo success. You deserve it. When you launch on your own, 
Don't feel guilty, and like you have made everyone comfortable with it. Not your job, not your burden, not your problem. Focus on you and your needs. It may be overwhelming, but it will get easier. And once you can breathe freely, don't get fixated on how you've been wrong. Time has a way of balancing the scales without you nudging it along. Second story. My wife cheated on me, and my kids betrayed me by hiding her affair for years. Now, I've become a distant, absentee parent. I missed my daughter's childbirth, favoring my sister's kids and becoming more of a parent to them, which has hurt my children even more. Do they deserve any of this? I 57M was married to my wife for almost 25 years, and we divorced four years ago after I found out about her infidelity. She had an affair partner for almost five years. She is now with her affair partner. The whole process hurt me a lot because everything I did in life, I did it for my wife and kids, and to now find that about my wife, it just hurt me. My two children 29F, 26M had known about the affair for years, and they had hidden it from me. They both felt very guilty about it, and I don't blame them because they didn't want to break up their family. My daughter even cried a lot and apologized a lot of times, but I told her it was alright. They had their own life now, and I didn't want this eating them up, so I told them to let go of the guilt. However, ever since I found that they had hidden the affair from me, I lost a lot of love for them. I wasn't going to cut them out of my inheritance or will or anything like that. But emotionally I couldn't connect with them at all. I also have a niece 30F and nephew 28M who I have been very close with, especially since their father passed away at a really young age. I played a father-like role during their young years because losing her husband at such a young age was very tough for my sister. Over the last four years, I have also been looking forward to spending more time with them. Both my niece and nephew have children and they have invited me over for their children's birthdays. They have also invited me over for their own birthdays, on Father's Day, on holidays. Overall, we are a very tight-knit multi-generational family, and I am very proud to be a grandpa to their children, and we are already developing a bond. However, in doing so, I have also lost all interest in connecting with my own children. My daughter has two children, while my son has his first child on the way. They have invited me over multiple times, but I have told them I'm busy. I rarely go over if at all, and I've missed almost all of their children's special occasions. I'm not really interested in being a grandpa to their children. Monetarily, sure, I have been sending them gifts, but I just don't feel like seeing them at all. My daughter especially seems very hurt by it at times. But I hope she understands the reason for this. Ada. Comments. Hemradio underscore 73. If you won't cut them out of the will, reduce their share, and name the niece and nephew. They were there for you. OP. Oh, both my niece and nephew were already in the will. I consider them as my children too, so it's divided equally between my son, daughter, niece, and nephew. Accomplished underscore net 7 and 990. His kids were probably in college, or even high school during this time. A. They either didn't want their dad to get hurt. B. Break up the family C. Get in trouble with mom, hoping the affair would go away. Let it go. Dude. Remember, the best revenge is success. You are keeping yourself from moving on and living your best life. OP. I am not really looking for revenge against my own children. I just can't emotionally connect with them. This isn't about them. It's about me. When I go over to my nieces and nephews and spend time with them and their children, I am filled with joy. I cannot say the same for my own children. I feel nothing. Yes, my children are really hurt by this, especially my daughter. They know I spend time over at their cousins and with their children. But for the 20-30 years I have left, I want to prioritize myself and my mental health. Update. Thank you all for the advice. The one thing I got most from the comments was that my children deserve to know the truth and to not be left in a limbo like it was for years. And that's what I just did. I just got off a video call with my daughter and my son. The call was pretty rough and extremely emotional, but I got everything off my chest. I told them that while I had forgiven them, I could never forget it, and that for my mental health. It was better we limit our interactions. I told them to not feel guilty about anything, but that after dedicating more than half my life to my wife and children, it was time I put myself first. I told them my heart wasn't in it to be a grandparent to their children. I was also honest with them and told them my heart was only it for my nephews and nieces' kids, and whenever I did go to their house, I felt joy, while for my own children, I felt nothing. My children probably already knew it, but I wanted them to hear it from me directly. It was really hard to get it off my chest and say it directly to my children's faces. I told them they were still welcome to come to my house anytime, 
and call me anytime they needed help. Both my children took the call really hard, but I think my daughter took it worst. Those were really ugly tears, and I felt really bad about it. But I do feel a sense of relief, and I have pretty much told all of my feelings to my children and did not keep anything secret. I can now move forward with my life, and so can my children. Comments Acrobatic Narwhal 62 But wait, did they just accept it or beg for a chance? Also, did your kid's relationship with their mother suffer? OP. They didn't beg, but they did apologize a lot and also cried, and they asked me to reconsider. I told them I would, but for now, I would rather we limit the interactions. Yes, their relationship with their mother has also suffered a lot. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.